Now, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, says the commission seeks clarification from the National Assembly on the need to amend the Electoral Act 2022 on manual transfer and electronic transmission of results. Yakubu spoke on Thursday in Abuja at a meeting with resident electoral commissioners in the 36 states of the Federation. The INEC chairman explained that management of election results was amongst the eight items that arose from the conduct of the 2023 general election, which required the National Assembly's scrutiny. Well, we're now being joined by Ene Obi, who is the convener of the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room, to discuss these recommendations by the election management body and future elections in view. Great to have you here on Newsday. Thank you for joining us. Come on, convener, please. Right. And um, what do you make of these uh, eight recommendations uh, and uh, the timing also? Well, I'm looking at, uh, you know, the reasons for bringing people to uh, bringing the wrecks together to talk about, um, you know, uh, interpretations. And so you want to reflect on why the reasons for the interpretations and the, what were the rules before? What was the, uh, the Electoral Act? You recall that uh, the Electoral Act we went to the, you know, I think the National Assembly sent that bill to the, to the then president, Muhammad Buhari, about seven, the, uh, six times, the seventh time was when he eventually signed the bill. And even before he signed the bill, there was a lot of, uh, you know, movement here and there about uh, whether to sign or not to sign, the removal, the issue of the consensus and so on. Eventually... Uh, civil society organizations were on the streets, we tried, you know, protested and then, you know, advanced and, uh, and really advocated for the signing of the electoral bill. So eventually it was signed. And what we saw, so what went wrong with the bill as it were? You know, how did it work? I think where the concerns were quite raised were the transmission of the general election 2023 where you had the National Assembly and all the, the uh, for the Senate, you know, the Assembly elections were transmitted and the presidential election was not transmitted. What informed INEC not to have transmitted? Because I think the commission owes uh, the Nigerian people an explanation of what really happened. Because this is about taking people's money. This is about transparency and accountability. You took money, you did a budget, and you went to the National Assembly, the money was approved, or was the, all the money that was supposed to be given, were they not given for logistics and for everything? Have they been, you know, uh, uh, and then you came up with a, a, a rule, that's the INEC, because when you are talking of the uh, 2022 Electoral Act, you also talk, uh, you know, towards the end, that's towards the election itself, was when the final, there was a, an update or maybe an approval of the INEC guidelines. He should talk about the guidelines because it was the guidelines section 18A that was used to deceive Nigerians. Because then it came to a choice. You choose which one to transmit and which one not to transmit. What are you asking for an interpretation for? You know, when you are given a responsibility, it is your duty to also look at how you can firm up your decisions to do the right thing. That's a responsibility. It's an obligation for you to go and do the right thing at a time where, you know, Nigerians were looking for uh, quite the deficiency and trust issues already in the system. You were supposed to then, because the technology had come to stay. It has come and is staying with you. And then you are now seeking for, you know, rules of interpretation. I'm really, uh, I'm disturbed and shocked by, by that reaction to say, we have to look for interpretation. Why did you use your rules to sabotage the Nigerian, the, the Electoral Act itself? Mm. Thank you for uh, your submissions. But I would uh, also like to hone in on this uh, debate over this manual uh, transfer versus the electronic transmission of results. Uh, it was a major point of uh, contention during the 2023 elections. How do you think that this ambiguity, uh, you know, we we'll talk about how it's affected public trust initially in the, in the electoral process and exactly how the National Assembly addressing should address this in amending 
ending this el electoral uh, act. Because when we look at the technological challenges with the BVAS, with the IRF systems during the last elections, it, it seems as if uh, elect electronic transmission in itself is a viable solution. Or should we still be looking at a hybrid approach to continue to ensure accuracy and transparency until we get it right uh, technologically? I think what is, what, uh, the, what is wrong with us or what, what, what are the issues? The quality of the human beings. Beavers are machines. The technology is handled by human beings. What is the quality of the people that are handling the machines? Because this doesn't just go to INEC, it goes to the citizens themselves that are at different responsibility levels. How have you been able to use it, you know, in terms of implementing or carrying out your duties? And I think that is where we are. You can look at transmissions from different levels. Coming from the off-cycle elections, there were certain areas that, you know, they had issues. And I knew when to say, okay, with this going, we can use this. But if you use it transparently and people are able to see the, trans you know, the accountability uh, environment, they will say, okay, you use it because of this issue. But when you go to manual, when we're coming from off-cycle election, we went to so many places before it was used in the general election. We went to Anambra election. From Anambra, we went to different states for the election. Mm -hmm. And then you come to 2000, we had to Ekiti or Shun, you know, and, and so on. And the beavers were performing very well. And so when they, there was no accusation of hybrid. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that... Uh, I think 2022, when they, they, we had an election in, um, at the FCT, we saw hybrid in the areas like Abaji and so on and, and so forth because of issues of uh, literacy and, so, and, uh, and uh, other areas. But wherever you are, where the beavers functioning, mm. did you have a fall? Because the world has gone tech tech. So you can't come and start saying, OK, let's go back manually. Let's authorize it so that there can be blatant use of those areas. In sections where there, are, where there, where there is a conflict, it's like having a conflict between the, the uh, laws and the, the other acts, and then you, you look at interpretation. When they want to interpret the issue of the, the, the that's the, uh, uh, um, where you have the constitution talking about uh, the winning of Abuja for someone to become a president, when you look at it, when it suited them, they started looking for interpretations and so on, bending the laws. But when you come down to the issue of manual, the, the, the beavers worked very well in, uh, in Anambra. At first, the picking up early, it was difficult. When we went to, you know, uh, Ekiti, it, it still, you know, the performance was very high. We went to Oshu, it worked. In the last elections, it worked. But where they want to cheat, where human beings, and that is why I say the responsibility is at different levels. The political class is brutalizing the system. Brutalizing the, you know, I, I, I next should be declaring results, but you are having, you know, the courts, they are telling you to go to court. If you tell me to go to court, I say, account for what you have done first. And so the issue of accountability and sanctions are not being met. If that volume of money was given for, you know, the electronic, you know, the, the technology that you have chosen to use, where it fails, you need to show Nigerians that this technology is not working. Where is the statement? Have we had a statement from INEC to tell us what really happened during the 2023 general election? Those who are maintaining oversight, does it suit them to hold INEC for transparency and accountability, or are they violators? Those who are bending the hands of INEC? Because I'm asking that Nigerians need to get up. You need to get up and also take responsibility for your citizenship to be able to pressure the political class to stop dovetailing. Because I believe that the INEC we had going into 2023 election had the qualities to have, to have had the most decent and the uh, uh, quality election, but they chose to do differently. And it is, uh, I mean, it would be a very great shame if we had to take steps back in terms of doing a hybrid um, and speaking of the technology and seeing as how it has failed so woefully in uh, elections past, is it even a time to bring up diaspora voting? And I ask this because obviously it would be it would have to be something that would be tech intensive. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I, I, I think uh, first I want to say that uh, people should be held accountable. And so the money that was given for the 2023 general election, 
INEC should be audited and they should be held accountable. And they need to explain to Nigerians whatever happens. I don't know if they, those who are having the oversight, it has been explained to. Because I know that the, the, uh, I was leading the, the civil society situation room then. And when we went for a meeting with INEC, because normally we were having quarterly meetings and the meeting was called after the general yeah. election. But when the chairman started and said he was not going to talk about uh, the 2023 general election, then, I, of course, I exited the meeting uh, uh, thereafter. On diaspora, the decency, the issue is believing in yourself, the trust deficit in the system, that if you allow diaspora voting, what is, going to, what is the accountability system? We need to get our systems right. We need to get the quality of our personnel. Nigerians need to get themselves right because these will, systems will not change unless all citizens are able to hold themselves even accountable for being, you know, for civic responsibility to go and vote or be voted for and be held accountable and hold the duty bearers accountable at all times. So we need accountability in the system. It's only when we build the trust deficit, uh, you know, build trust again. It's really, really not going well in terms of going back to the, to the uh, community to ask them to come and vote again because of the trust, the trust issue. But we're believing in the machines and only when we get it right. We need to work on our... The technologies are working. Mm. It's the human beings that have decided to use it against us. Mm. Well, if I can't put the, put the, uh, the blame on, on, on Beavers, and, and, and now we talk about training the people, they have cited a logistical and operational challenges as reasons for lapses during their elections. Do you see these proposed amendments addressing the structural issues within the commission, or are there deeper reforms needed beyond the law? And as we approach our future elections, what timeline do you believe is realistic enough for implementing these amendments? and uh, how critical it is for INEC and the National Assembly to act as quickly as they can. You know, I, I tell you, on the logistics issue, I was, a, I was country director for Action Aid, you know, Nigeria at the time when we had, were looking at the issues of logistics because mm -hmm. INEC complained that in 2019 there were issues of logistics and, of course, we, you know, uh, big issues of logistics because bigger planes were going to the airports where the cranes that were you know, available at those airports were not, uh, 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 could not break the crane. You know, and this happened, we mobilized, we had a heavy mobilization, tried to look for, for funding to support INEC, because the issue is we engage government, we challenge government, but we engage them where there is a deficit or maybe where there is capacity need that they need support. We actually try to provide those, those support. And on this very occasion of uh, the issue of logistics, we had a big meeting in, in, you know, um, uh, with INEC, INEC officials, and also all those who were handling you know, aviation, handling uh, logistics for, for election materials. Uh, in 2019, they, they took 737 to Sokoto Airport, and there were no cranes that could bring them. Now, in that meeting which we held you know, in, uh, in 2022, that's uh, 2022, before the, before the, the, when the preparations were getting up. Mm. Many of them, you know, the complaint of SACO and NACO then was that, how can you bring a plane of, of uh, that magnitude to an airport and we were not informed? So we say, okay, now let's not look at it. Let's look at the things that were wrong with the 2019 and then let's plan, plan for the future. And they gave their suggestions, including CBN, including, you know, National Association of Road Transport Workers, National Union of Road Transport Workers, National Association of Road Transport Owners, and National Union of Road Transport Workers, maritime workers, you know, and all the levels of those who were handling the Nigerian Army Logistics, Navy, you know, uh, you have uh, Air Force Logistics, everybody that could fly. And so we, it, people came together and we were very, very excited because the chairman was in the meeting from morning to night and the, everybody, hands were on deck. I think a lot still need to be done with that. And, uh, you know, they came with suggestions on what to tell them. Inform us, you know, now about your plans for 2023 elections. Which plane is landing where and mm -hmm. what do you need in those places? And I thought that was a good planning. So we didn't have a case of bigger planes going to land where the cranes were not able to because, uh, you know, more planning were done. I think a lot of planning was done. 
the changing of Naira and so on, you know, so, so many of the things. That, so the plannings that were done then can still be revisited. Early planning, you require, you want to go into 2027 election, you know, uh, you need to look at those plans and see, keep with it. But if you did all you did, and still, you know, you were able to uh, have a waiver on certain things, then we are not ready to move because one election, the next election should be an improvement, subsequent elections should be improvements on the ones that in the past because there are lessons that you want to build. You are building the human capacity, investing in the human capacity to move the elections forward. But if you are not, uh, if you are not showing us that what you have done is in fact, you know, infected, uh, in terms of is reflected in the, the work that you are carrying out, then we don't know. Others are that, you know, you, you have some saboteurs, but we have a lot of, in the, we're told that so many arrests were made. We had vote trading, which is done by citizens, by politicians and citizens themselves. Who is going to do that? Who is going to cover that? It's a citizen. So we're not just looking at INEC, we are looking at the entire election process, that we are having election without democratic participation. That's mm. a shame for Nigeria. And things cannot go on like this. And they cannot come and ask us now and say, should we go back to manual? What of the investment that was done? Mm. You know, the investment that was done to get you there. What did you do with it? You never told us, you know, and even when we're challenging at that time, we're hearing that you are not going to upload. You said you, you are going to upload. Everything will be uploaded real time. If something happened to you or something happened that truncated that, for us to know that we tried and we didn't succeed, you ought to have uh, explained it to Nigerians. I, I have always said that, you know, uh, I, I, it's surprising that uh, Mahmoud has not resigned till now. He will not resign because those he made possible to come to power will not allow that. But what we are saying is being a Nigerian is above everything. You have to be a patriotic Nigerian. Choose Nigeria first. Do something for Nigeria. Stand upright for Nigeria. We will leave this country behind. What you do is what is left behind. Mm. And so let, let everybody, both the politicians, the citizens, everyone needs a part in it. We cannot, politics is too important because it affects life. We are discussing this issue at a time where more than 100, uh, 100 million Nigerians are below the poverty line. Children are crying in schools because they cannot pay school fees. People are crying because they have no food. And a lot of things are going really wrong. Right. We have to work together. You're, to you're completely right. The kind of things that we're, we're, we're in it. Very well said. And uh, great to speak with you this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us and having this discussion with us, NAOB of the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room. Mm -hmm.